Osteomyelitis refers to inflammation and infection of the bone and the bone marrow that can be caused by direct inoculation of the open traumatic wound or by blood borne organisms through the hematogenous route. This can spread to the bone cortex and the periosteum via the herbation canals. Osteomyelitis can be classified to four classes that is, acute hematogenous osteomyelitis, acute osteomyelitis, chronic osteomyelitis, and subacute osteomyelitis. Acute hematogenous osteomyelitis is caused by blood borne organisms and most common in children. And the features include soft tissue swelling at early stages, bone demineralization, and sequestra that is the dead bone with surrounding granulation tissue and involucrum or the periosteal newborn later. Acute osteomyelitis occurs after an open fracture or a pain reduction with internal fibrillation, and the clinical features resemble those of acute hematogenous osteomyelitis. Its treatment is by radical irrigation of debridement and removal of orthopedic hardware. Organisms responsible are Staphylococcus aureus, Pseudomonas aeruginosa and the coliforms. Empiric therapy includes nafcillin with ciprofloxacin or vancomycin with third generation cephalosporins. Chronic osteomyelitis may arise as a result of inappropriately treated acute osteomyelitis, trauma, soft tissue spread in the immunosuppression patients, and diabetes together with intravenous drug abuses. The treatments include debridement, bone grafting, soft tissue coverage, intravenous antibiotics, and amputation. This treatment is based on cultures and sensitivity testing. Empiric therapy is not indicated in these patients. Subacute osteomyelitis is usually discovered radiologically in a patient with painful limb and there's no systemic signs and symptoms. The clinical features of osteomyelitis. In acute hematogenous osteomyelitis, a history of recent local injury of the children or skin or upper respiratory tract infection is present. Severe and constant pain, tenderness and willingness to use the infected limb, and within 24 hours, sense of septicemia will develop where the patient is acutely ill, malaise, anorexia, and fever. Soft tissue swelling on the infected limb will be present. The diagnosis includes complete blood count where there is elevated weight blood cells, bone cultures, blood cultures, and which are only positive in half of the patients. There's no concrete radiographic evidence of bone infection, and MRI is the imaging technique of choice. A plain X-ray film can help in diagnosis of chronic osteomyelitis. Normally, the bone is high resistant to infection, and in osteomyelitis, it only arises when there is a large organism inoculation, trauma, leading to bone damage or the presence of foreign materials. The pathogenesis of osteomyelitis is multifactorial and poorly understood. Some immoderate factors include the virulence of the infecting organisms, underlying immune status of the host, and the type, location, and vasculature of the bone. The superative infection is accompanied by edema, vascular congestion, and small vessel thrombosis. The vascular supply to the bone is decreased by infection extending to the surrounding soft tissues in early acute stage of the disease. When the medullary and periosteal blood supplies are compromised, then sequestra may form, and if treated quickly and insistent with antibiotics, and if necessary with surgery, acute osteomyelitis can be halted prior to development of dead bone. If there is an established infection, fibrosis tissue and chronic inflammatory cells will form around the granulation tissue and the dead bone. Early and specific treatment is important in osteomyelitis. And identification of the causative microorganism is essential for antibiotic therapy. The pathological features of chronic osteomyelitis are the presence of necrotic bone, formation of new bone, and the oozing of the polymorphic clear leukocytes. The new bone forms from the surviving fragments of the periosteum and the endosteum in the areas of infection. An involucrum, which is an encasing shed of live bone, encloses the dead bone under the periosteum. This involucrum is irregular and usually perforated by openings. Purulence may trap into the surrounding soft tissue and eventually drain to the skin surface, forming a chronic sinus. The major cause of bone infection is Staphylococcus aureus, 
An infection with an open fracture or associated with joint prosthesis and trauma often require a combination of antimicrobial antibiotics and surgery. Biofilm forming bacteria cause most infections, and these are highly structured group of bacterial cells. Osteomyelitis can result from hemorrhaginous spread after bacteremia, where prosthetic joints are associated with infection. Microorganisms typically grow in a biofilm. This biofilm protects the bacteria from antimicrobial treatment as well as the host immune response. The treatment of osteomyelitis is resistant to 70% penicillin and methylene, cloxacillin, cephalosporin is used after culture and sensitivity testing. Bed rest and analgesic supportive methods such as intravenous fluids and blood transfusion. Local resting and surgical decompression if local and systemic manifestations have not improved dramatically after 24 hours. Continuation of antibacterial therapy for a minimum of period of 4 weeks is considered. The prognosis depends on time interval between onset of infection and institution of treatment, the effectiveness of antibacterial drug against specific causative bacteria, the dosage of antibacterial drug, and the duration of the antibacterial therapy. Complications that can arise from osteomyelitis can include early complications such as death from associated septicemia, abscess formation, septic arthritis, and late complications such as chronic osteomyelitis, pathologic fractures, joint contractures, local growth and disturbance. Chronic hematogenous osteomyelitis results from inadequate treatment of acute phase, fail to diagnose acute osteomyelitis, and this infected dead bone sequestrum, plus bacteria that are able to survive and multiply innervation canals, cloaca and involucrum, sinus tracts and sequestrictum. These are a of painful swelling, loss of function in more than one draining sinuses. Radiographic diagnosis usually is apparent in these cases, and the treatment can seldom be completed eradicated until all the infected dead bone not only has separated or sequestrated, but also has either been extruded spontaneously to the sinus tract or has been removed surgically by frozen on a sequestrectomy. Antibacterial therapy is indicated in this case, and systemic or local antibiotics can be used. Complications include joint contractures, pathological fractures, amyloid disease, and malignant changes in epidermis leading to epidermoid carcinoma.